Hi guys, a lot of people have been asking about my handmade wallpaper that I've created here for some of the rooms in our chateau. And this week I happened to be working on a bespoke wallpaper for a client in Paris. And I thought it was the perfect time to show you the process of... Philip, what are you doing? The pipe gluing tutorial. No, but we did a YouTube poll and we asked everybody if they wanted wallpaper or pipe gluing. Well, it was really close. I think last time I looked at it, it was about 87% for the wallpaper. Oh. You know, I'm sure it'll be a great tutorial, maybe next time. Do you need my help? No, I'm good here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Bye. Yeah, see you later then. My name is Anna. I'm an English former fashion and textile designer. I moved to Paris, age 23, to work for the French couture house Bauman and stayed for the croissants, the wine, and of course for Philip, a filmmaker from the South Tyrolean Alps. After 10 amazing years, getting married, buying and renovating two homes and having two babies, we decided city life was no longer for us. Philip had been dreaming of buying a chateau since the day we met and finally convinced me to start looking. We came to visit Chateau gonville sur fleur Despite being in quite poor condition and needing a complete renovation, we immediately fell in love. In May 2019, we got the keys to the chateau, our new home. With a tight budget, we had no choice but to do most of the renovations by ourselves. We're learning new skills as we go, building muscles we never knew we had, and getting creative to make the chateau as personal as possible whilst preserving its historic features. It's all part of this crazy family adventure and we wouldn't change it for anything. For all the wallpapers I've made in the chateau, I use a technique called lino printing. So traditionally wallpapers are printed either using screen prints or woodblock prints. And lino printing is just a really great technique because you can just do it at home. All you need is a piece of lino and it's a really great material because it's a bit sort of bendy and really easy to carve. And then you have one of these tools with a little sharp end. Um, you create your design and then you carve it out and it's as simple as that. It takes a little practice with the tool and you have to be a little bit careful that you don't stab yourself, which I have done a couple of times. But once you've got your engraving, it's great because you can use it as many times as you want. It's so accessible and anybody can have a go. To start my wallpaper, I began by researching. So that is a process I always used when I was a designer for fashion and textiles. And I used that same process here, basically, I created this mood board of my images of my research. I look in books or magazines and I use the internet a lot because it's a great source of inspiration. I print my images out and then I start to look at them and I try to create some kind of coherency between the images. So you can see that I was looking at these quite stylized leaves, for example, and that's something that I started to think about using in my design. So it helps you to sort of bring all your ideas down to something a little bit more precise. And from that point, I was able to start my design. I obviously looked at very historic research and although I was really inspired by that, I knew that the feeling of the wallpaper, I wanted to have something a little bit more contemporary. So I took some of those forms, but I knew that the print itself, I wanted it to be quite simple, just two colors, the background color and the foreground color something in this spirit where we lose actually the imagery of the design and it becomes from a distance just a texture. So the mood board helped me to come up with this particular design. But the next part is where it gets difficult because to make a successful wallpaper you need to make sure that you get the repeat right. So you start by dividing your paper equally on the two axes and then in the center of the paper I'm creating my design using my flower as my central motif. And then the next important thing is to also create some kind of design on the rest of the axis so that you're filling in these parts here and maybe the same over here. 
and maybe, yeah, maybe something similar over here. But you don't go over the edges, I see. No, I haven't gone over the edges yet. We'll, at the end, we'll see what's missing and then we will fill it all in to finish it off. After I've finished my design, we just cut along the lines that we drew before. So we're dividing our paper into four separate squares. There we go. And then you need to switch the diagonal pieces like this. All right. So you're left with the center empty. And okay. that's it? No, now we need to tape it. Tape them together. So that's where I would fail because I'm not able to tape two papers together in a straight line. Hmm. And now we fill in the center, maybe with another flower. And then we can choose to sort of, sort of fill in all the areas around. For example, here we have all this blank space that we now need to fill. And we've got some of the beginning of where we were creating beginnings of our foliage. So we, now what's nice is to try and join. You need to try to feel like it's evenly kind of covered. Now I will scan it to do a very quick repeat of the design and see if the repeat is nice. I can just simply collage them together to see if I like the flow of my design. And if it works. And if it works. It's a bit like a jigsaw puzzle. It's magic, it works. Sometimes there's some lines that are not perfect, but that's where you can then go back to your design and correct them. So this design is still quite repetitive and that's because it's a simple repeat. And I've had quite a lot of people asking me about doing workshops and tutorials. And maybe that's something that we are thinking about doing in the future here or maybe online. And in these workshops, I would go into more detail in how to create half drop repeats and more complex repeats like I used in my design. Anna just went to get changed and to pick up some paint. And I think it's a perfect time to speak about something way more exciting. Waste pipes. Interesting fact, in the UK waste pipes are generally joined with a mechanism called push fit. There's a rubber seal in it, you bring another pipe in here and the seal is automatically sealed. Perfect. Whilst in France, pipes are always glued together. There's another interesting fact. Hey, what are you doing? Nothing, just, just waiting for you. Okay. Do you need a special paint to make wallpaper? No, this is just a normal household wall paint. So I'm using a matte emulsion. And that's the great thing with this technique because you can use whatever paint you have. And so instead of going out to find a wallpaper that matches your paint colors, you can actually make your wallpaper to match your paint, which is much easier. Oh, Philip, now I need a hand. What can I do for you? I uh, just need to move the trestle table out of the way. All right. Anna, it was really interesting to see how you made the repeat. Yeah. And you know what's interesting as well? Mm-hmm. 40% of all waste by blockages are due to baby wipes. Okay. Anna, what kind of paper do you use? This is just a lining paper. It's not expensive and it's really easy to find online. I'll try to put the link into the description of our video. I cut my wallpaper to the height of the room and I always give myself 10 centimeters at the top and at the bottom, just to be sure. My stamp actually overlaps slightly onto the second piece of paper, which is why I'm taping them together. If I were to do this again, I would make sure I made my stamp to half the width of the paper. 
And that way I wouldn't have to do the taping and I could just do one continuous long line. So make sure you always buy your lining paper before you make your stamp. This awakens memories. <laughs> yeah, it feels like ages ago since we had to do this for the green room. If I told you then that in a couple of months you have to do it all over again. <laughs> I don't mind, I enjoy it. Actually could just use a big roller for doing this, but <laughs> it's more fun with a little one. Yeah, size doesn't always matter. Small is good too. Yeah, probably. But you wouldn't know that. But What are you doing? What? Don't you like it? Really, Philip? Yeah, it's incredible what you can do with a waste pipe. And the last bit. Last little bit. After using this stamp to print all the wallpaper for the green room, it did need a little bit of repair, so I had to recarve some of the areas to make sure that it's nice and clean again. You can either use a roller, or I like to use a paintbrush to apply the paint because you get a really nice paint stroke effect when you print it. And again, is this a normal paint that you're using here? Yeah, it's the same matte emulsion. Big moment. First stamp going down. And it's really important to try and line it up nicely with the edge of the paper. Okay, and once it's down, once it's happy, then we have to stamp, well, walk on it. Don't look too closely at my old boots. I, I like your boots, Anna. I think I might need some new ones. What do you think? No, I think they are perfect. They, <laughs> they look the job. So if you haven't already seen the green room in our Chateau Tour video, this is what the wallpaper looks like when it's finished. It took me a full week to print the wallpaper for this room, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. When you look up 
close, you can see the imperfections on the print. If you want to have a more even print, you could choose to apply your paint on your stamp with a roller. But I love to use a brush because I love the fact that when you have, use a brush, you get this very uneven texture. It's very used, almost aged. And from afar, it really becomes textural. Anna, having made a wallpaper for that room, it must be almost as satisfying as connecting a toilet to the sewage system. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I think we're a good team. Yes, definitely. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. For exclusive videos and behind the scenes updates, have a look at our Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching.